to new beginnings as we lift our eyes to our hope beyond a creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God
Easter. My name is Erica and we're so glad you're tuning in with us today for Easter at Spring Hills Online. If you're on your computer or mobile device, grab the link and share it with somebody. It could be a friend, a family member, a neighbor, whoever you know that could benefit from hearing this message or being a part of this experience. We want them to tune in with us. We've temporarily moved all of our services from on campus to online. You can tune in every weekend across four platforms to experience Spring Hills at home. And next weekend, Pastor Brett is launching a brand new series and we want you to be a part of it. For all of the details, check out springhills.org. If you're watching with us for the first time or if you want to get more involved, then you're invited to join us for April's Digital Growth Track. This month, Growth Track will take place on Zoom on April 19th and 26th. At Growth Track, you'll learn some of the ins and outs of our church, meet our staff, and find out all the ways you can be involved at Spring Hills. You can register for Growth Track by texting Growth Track to the number below. If you're on your computer, you can click the link posted in the comments or visit us anytime online at springhills.org slash growth track. We're going to have an incredible service together. But before we get started, we know that Easter at Spring Hills wouldn't be complete without the bunny. Check out this video. Good morning, Spring Hills, and happy Easter to you. So glad we can be together like this. Even though it's not my favorite, you know that I'd rather see us all together in person and be able to encourage one another that way. But I'm thankful to God that we can celebrate Easter morning together. And so welcome. 
Welcome. I have such good news to share with you today. I can hardly contain myself. This coronavirus shelter in place has all of us in a weird spot. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, what do we do? Can we go outside or not? Are we supposed to just sit and never uh, go outside again? Will we ever be in church again? Will we ever be see our friends again? I mean, all of this, these kind of things. Let me tell you what I think is happening. I don't have a Bible verse for this, but I believe it. I believe that God is using this coronavirus pandemic for this purpose, to get the attention of the entire world, for the world to stop for a minute from all its hustle and bustle and busyness to hear the good news of the gospel, which is this, that God sent his son into the world so that through believing in him and what he did for you on the cross, that you could have eternal life. You could have forgiveness of sin and eternal life. I believe God is using these, these times right now, which we've never seen in the history of the world, these times right now when the entire world is listening to proclaim his love. So join with me as we pray uh, that God will use it. Why don't we do that right now? Lord, I pray, we all do, watching by way of the internet right now, we pray for the world to hear the good news of Jesus Christ in these days, particularly today, that they'd hear about your resurrection from the dead. We love you, God. We thank you. You're in charge. You're sovereign, Lord. You love this world so much that you gave your son. Fill us and strengthen us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to look at uh, John chapter 20 with you today, which is John's account of the resurrection. Friday was a dark day. Friday, Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. It was even dark. The sun went away from noon until three. When Jesus died, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he said, It is finished. And he gave up his spirit. And he died for the sins of the world. All hope was lost on Friday, at least for those who didn't understand that the resurrection was coming and in scripture was prophesied to have come. We read about it in John chapter 20 when it says in verse 1 that on the first day of the week, so Sunday, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Amazing. Mary, along with some other friends we find from the other gospel accounts, went to the tomb with spices to anoint Jesus' body. They discussed among themselves, how are we going to move the stone away? They didn't have all the details figure out, figured out. When they showed up at the tomb, the, the stone had been rolled away and there was an angel on top of it. There had been a great earthquake. The stone was moved, an angel was there. The Roman guards, when they saw the angel and experienced the earthquake and the moving of the stone, they were terrified. It says in one of the Gospels that they were like, it was like they were dead. They were so terrified by the angel and by what they had seen and experienced. They ran back to the religious leaders and told them about the angel and about the moving of the stone and about the body of Jesus being uh, gone. And the religious leaders told them, here, take this money and tell everybody that the disciples came in the middle of the night and stole the body away. Well, Mary and some friends go to the tomb and the tomb is empty and there's the stone that's rolled away. So they went and they got Peter and John and they told them all about it. They don't know where they've laid him and Peter and John ran to the tomb John's gospel records that John outran Peter. An interesting little detail here. You know this is an eyewitness account when you have little details like that. You know that, that John would record how he outran Peter. And, and later on, it'll talk about how the burial cloths of Jesus were in two different locations. His face cloth was in one part of the tomb and, and the other garment was in another part of the tomb. Just eyewitness account here of what happened by those who were there. 
Mary gets Peter and John. They run to the tomb and can't find Jesus anywhere. They're, they're dumbfounded. It says that John believed. John believed. It's like he put it together. Jesus isn't here. He foretold that he would rise on the third day, and he believed. Peter was uncertain, didn't know what was going on. They went back home. After they went home, Mary Magdalene, from whom Jesus had cast seven demons, says in the Gospels that this Mary Magdalene, who was in bondage, who was oppressed and possessed, by demons and Jesus came along and cast them out and gave her freedom gave her new life this Mary she was the first the first to go to the tomb and the first to see Jesus when she went and it was empty and Peter and John left she stayed there and wept and wept and wept when she looked into the tomb there were two angels inside and they said to her why are you looking for the dead among the living. And why are you looking for those who are alive when Jesus has been raised from the dead? And, and Mary, through her tears, said, Where have you laid him? Where have you put him? Tell me so I can get him. And then Mary turned around, and Jesus was standing there. But she didn't recognize him. Through her tears, she assumed he was the gardener, John says in his gospel. Through her tears, she said to him, do you know where they've laid him? Where they've put him? If you just tell me, I'll get him. And then Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary. And Mary recognized that it was Jesus. And she cried out, Rabbi, and then hung on to him and held on to him. And Mary, and Jesus said to Mary, go tell my disciples that I've been raised from the dead. Go tell them. And that I'll be a hell, see them in Galilee. And so Mary ran off and told the disciples she had seen the Lord. And a lot of them thought that she was crazy. They couldn't believe the story that, that the angels had appeared to her, that Jesus was alive, and they didn't believe it. They questioned all of it. That night, John records that Jesus, while the disciples in the evening in verse 19, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came, stood among them and said to them, I love this, peace be with you. And then they came, they, after he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus again said to them, peace be with you. The other gospel writers describe the event like this, that when Jesus came through the door, that the disciples were terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. And Jesus said, you're not seeing a ghost. You know, you're not seeing a spirit. A spirit doesn't have flesh and blood like you see that I have. Here, put your finger in the hole that's in my hand and see my side and put your hand there. And they proclaimed, oh God, and they worshiped him and knew it was Jesus. And then one of the gospel writers says, Jesus said to them, hey, do you have any food? He was hungry. And they got some broiled fish with them. Important point of the resurrection is that Jesus was raised from the dead bodily. It was him. It was his body. He was truly alive. Thomas wasn't there. One of the disciples, doubting Thomas, he wasn't there. And when the other disciples told him down in verse 25, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see his hands and the mark the mark of nails the pla and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side. I will never believe. Then eight days later, the disciples are gathered again together and Jesus shows up in their midst. And Thomas is there this time. And Jesus goes over to Thomas and says to him, Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Don't, do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amazing, amazing. Every gospel writer, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John record the resurrection 
Why is this so important? Well, it's crucial. Jesus said to Thomas after he proclaimed, my Lord and my God, Jesus said, if you believe because you've seen me, blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. You're blessed having not seen the resurrection physically, but reading about it in the gospels. You're blessed when you believe it and trust it and understand what it means. John finishes out this portion of his gospel by saying this, listen, verse 30. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Why did John and I witness of Jesus Christ and one of the followers, one of the disciples, why was this written down? Why did Mark write it down in his gospel? And why did Matthew write it down? They wrote it down because they were there. They experienced it. They saw it with their own eyes. Jesus Christ performing miracles, performing many signs that he really was and is the Son of God. They wrote all this down so that you and I would read it and there'd be a record of it. And John says that he wrote it down so that in understanding what they experienced and saw, you would believe, you would believe that Jesus really is who he said he is, the Son of God, and that by believing, you would have life in his name, that you'd come to life and have a new life in Jesus Christ. The resurrection. I think some writers have correctly said that Christianity rises and falls on this event. It really does. It's the hinge pin. It's the, the absolute crucial truth and teaching of Christianity. Because if Jesus died and didn't rise from the dead, then he's, he's just another prophet. He's just another teacher. And Christianity is just another religion. Take your pick. Which one do you like better? But if Jesus did in fact rise from the dead as eyewitnesses recorded that he did in the New Testament, then it means that Jesus' claim to being the Son of God is true. He really is God in the flesh. He really is God come to earth. God so loved the world that he sent his Son. That's true. And that Jesus, when he died on the cross for the sins of the world, for your sin and for mine, when he died for your sins, that payment, that substitution, that sacrifice of Jesus was acceptable to God the Father because Jesus was raised from the dead. If Jesus wasn't raised, then we'd never be certain that our sins were actually paid for and atoned for. But knowing that he came out of the grave gives us that assurance your forgiveness is real. Jesus claimed to be able to forgive sins when he was on the earth. One of the reasons that many criticized him, religious leaders condemned him. They said, how can you say that you can forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. Exactly. Jesus is, in fact, the son of God. And his death on the cross was sufficient for the payment of our sins. Think about it the hope of eternal life. You know, if anything, this COVID-19, you know, this virus that has the whole world stopped, reminds us that our life is, is not gonna just go on forever, that there's coming a point in time when, as the scripture says, we all will die and face a judgment. You can have eternal life. Jesus promised eternal life to those who believe. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead gives you the assurance that his promise of eternal life is true. He told Martha in John chapter 11, he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And then to Martha, Jesus said, do you believe this? Do you believe this? And then he went on to raise Martha's brother, Lazarus, from the dead in front of everybody. The hope of eternal life, a new heaven and a new earth. When you die, being in heaven, 
and experiencing all that God is going to do in taking this old earth and renewing it and restoring it to its original beauty. All of that hope is yours through the promise of Jesus Christ, through the forgiveness of sins. And you can be assured of it. You don't need to doubt it at all. Look, he rose from the dead, seeing loved ones again. Those who have died in Christ, seeing them again. That is an absolute assurance and certainty because Jesus rose. And there's a promise that all those who have believed in him, when he comes in the clouds, when he comes in the clouds in the second coming of Christ, when he comes again, we're longing for that day. And believe it's short and soon before it all happens. But when he comes in the clouds, the scripture says those who are dead in Christ that know Christ will rise first and meet the Lord in the air. And then we who are alive will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will ever be with the Lord. And I love what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4 when he describes all this. He says, encourage one another with these words. This life is not all there is. There's your resurrection. Your resurrection at the coming of Jesus Christ and all those who know the Lord in a great, great reunion. The resurrection of Jesus Christ sets him apart, sets Christianity apart. No other religion, no other major religion of the world has a founder or leader that ever claimed to be the Son of God. None of the leaders of the other major religions died and then rose again. Only Jesus, only Christianity has that kind of testimony. That's it. Set apart. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way. I'm the truth. Listen, when Jesus rose from the dead, it solidifies the fact that he is the truth, that he is the way, that he is the life. And you and I, if we want to know Jesus Christ and have eternal life, we must come by way of Jesus through him. What does that mean? It means to accept him as your savior. It means to believe that he really is the son of God, to cast yourself upon him for his new life and the life that he wants to give to you. I want to talk to you more about that in just a moment, but let's continue to worship God. And then I want to come back and share a few words with you.
just share as we close out our service something real personal with you I when I heard this message for the first time when I was in high school I admit I'll just say I didn't understand a lot of it I'd never heard it before but I knew God was reaching out to me I was at a desperate place in my life I was discouraged about the direction I was taking and the choices I had made and I I really was living a, a life of darkness and, and hiding that darkness from everybody else. And when I heard the good news, the Spirit of God was at work and He was calling me to Himself and my eyes were open to see the truth of it. And I, I wonder if, if right now, you who are watching this, someone in your living room, wherever you might be, if God isn't speaking to you and saying it's all true it's it's true Jesus really is the son of God and he really did rise from the dead and he wants to give you a new life for me I heard the spirits call I had my eyes open and I said yes to the forgiveness and grace of Jesus Christ and I want to invite you personally you right now to say yes to Jesus Christ some of you think, oh, my life's too bad. I've had too much darkness. I, I, I don't, I'm not worthy of it. Think about Mary Magdalene, the first one who went to the tomb. Mary Magdalene, from whom seven demons were cast out. I mean, you think about a life of bondage. Think about Mary Magdalene. And she was freed by Jesus. That's why she loved him so much and wept at his tomb and was so glad for the resurrection. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what's in your background. It doesn't matter what's happened in your life. Listen, Jesus came to die for all of that. He paid for all of it. And none of us deserves the forgiveness of sins. None of us earns our way to heaven. We receive it as a gift. I want to encourage you to receive Jesus Christ as a gift, His grace given to you. Some of you are doubters. You're like, Thomas, unless I see it with my own eyes, I won't believe. And then Thomas, seeing it with his own eyes and seeing the hands and the side of Jesus that had been pierced, said, my Lord and my God, if you got questions, that's okay. 
That's okay. But remember what Jesus said to Thomas, you believe because you see. Blessed are those who don't see and yet believe. The blessing is for you, doubters. Come to faith today. Come to faith. Read the New Testament accounts. They're all written by eyewitnesses. Read them. Take them in. Believe. Believe. Come to faith. And listen, we want to encourage you as a church. We want to encourage you in your life spiritually. And we want to, when you make that decision, we want to come alongside you and be be supportive to you. So would you pray with me now? And I, I want to lead you in a prayer similar to the one that I prayed when I accepted Jesus as my Savior. And if this represents, reflects where you're at in your life right now in your heart, then just make it your own prayer. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you rose from the dead. I believe it. You are the Son of God. I confess it, Lord. You are who you said you are. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I receive you today into my life. I ask you to forgive me for my sins, to cleanse me. I ask you to make me a new person. Put your Holy Spirit in me. Give me a new life. I want to begin again with you and give me the hope and assurance of eternal life that your resurrection gives and brings. And Lord, now I thank you and I give my life to you. Work in me and fulfill your purpose in me. I pray through the risen Lord, Jesus Christ, in his name. Amen. If you made that decision on the screen, we have a number that you can text to and we'll get you some information, a Bible if you'd like, and we'll just begin our connection to encourage you. And then when we're all back together as a church, you're coming, you're coming, and we'd love to have you here. And if you feel led to give, we have information on how you can give today too. And we just say that because... Uh, so that the, this gospel, this good news can continue to go out. It's more needed now than at any time in our history, I believe. And I believe now is the time, right? These moments, the time to get the good news of Jesus Christ out to as many people as possible. And you're part of that and you're participating in that. So as the Lord leads you, uh, would you give and and consider spreading the gospel together. And now we're going to close out our service with another song. Let it represent and be for you an encouraging moment of worshiping our Lord. God bless you.
don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working
is alive. I am so inspired and we pray you were too. We would love to hear from you. Every year we take an annual Easter survey. Do me a favor, text Spring Hills to the number below or if you're on your computer watching live, click the link in the comments. We value what you care about, so much so that when you fill out the annual Easter survey, you'll be entered to win a $100 Target gift card. Five winners will be emailed on Monday. So whether this is your first time watching or you're a regular member of Spring Hills, we want to hear from you. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay connected during the week. We're so glad you joined us this Easter. See you next weekend.